Hello, my name is King Tonto and I am here to talk about a lot of things. Things that I am tired of talking about. Things that I know that you also are tired of hearing. Um, but the reason I'm doing it is because I want to be able to grow up and show my son some form of liberation, some, some, some form of fight that I did for him. Um, I'm going to be talking about my marriage. It's an overflowed, overplayed CD, but it is something that has been taking me back even when my life has strived to move forward. So I'd like to clear up all the lies, all the allegations, and everything once and for all. If you're tired of hearing about my marriage, this is not the channel for you. If you aren't, listen and please focus. Thank you. First of all, I am doing this for my son. I am a mother, not just a mother, I'm a mother who is dangerously in love with her son. And I want my son to grow up and watch or listen to my own side of the story that I told him through my channel. Because really, this is for my son, not really for the public. So he will grow up and watch it someday. Secondly, I'm doing this because my son's father has constantly been pricking and pushing me to do a lot of irrational things online that is not me because of the things that he's doing behind the scenes. He's granting interviews every two weeks. There's either a paper interview, print, or there's either a TV interview or a radio station all on me. He has nothing else to talk about, it's all on me. And they're all allegations, they're all lies I'm here to clear. I'm not gonna go down history as the liar. No, I'm not. Um, you see, that's really a very complicated issue and that's where I really want people to pay close attention. Um, around 2013, 2014, I met a very lovely man. Um, I was not ashamed of saying his name but we just wanted it private because none of my relationship had had always seen the light of day and survived it. People always tarnished it with one news or the other. So it was something that I just wanted to protect. So I fell in love with a man and I called him Mr. X. And I dated him from 2013 to 2015. And um, we broke up in the worst circumstances ever. He, I wouldn't say he deceived me, I just didn't see the signs. He got up from my bed and went for his own wedding. And it just broke me, devastated me. And um, I think I was in a state of need, emotional need. I just wanted what I lost. So 2015, February 13th, I went into a club to celebrate. Actually, a friend of mine knew how depressed I was from my breakup and um, they took me to club to celebrate and the club is not a, a place where you actually find me as a person but I just needed that space I just needed to just unwind to clear my head and on the 13th of February 2015 I met my son's father he was not initially Mr. X but as a girl I had flaunted this relationship so much he had got me so much as Dr. Gibbs he had done so much for me that even other girls were like, you know what, I want to have a Mr. X in my life. For me to have, for that relationship to have broken up, I was so ashamed. I was so broken. I couldn't come out to say, you know what, my relationship had been broken. So when I met my son's father, February 2015, mind you, Mr. X had existed from 2013 or 14. When I met him, uh, we met him in the club, I met him in the club 13th night. And uh, we never saw again. I left the club on my own. I don't know if he left the club on his own, but I left the club and three days later we started to talk. And because I was in, I was an emotional wreck, I needed a new relationship. I needed some sort of consolation and he was there. So we got dating. And um, that's how I declared him Mr. X. Well, initially he was never Mr. X. He was never the person who got me all those exotic gifts or nothing.
Well, it's not because I was ashamed. It was more like, like a con he gave in to the idea of being called Mr. X because he wanted to be popular. And it was something that, you know, if you do this, we're going to get popular, you, you're going to get richer. I mean, he was my man, anything to make him get respected in public. So that was, that was the case. So the, the gift angle are different because before I was married or before I met him, there were lots of exotic gifts. And bef after I got married, there was the car gift. So it depends on what gifts you're talking about. Well, um, yes, I did sell the car. And yes, I also said I sold the car in my very and only first interview that I did with Azuka, the woman who betrayed me and got bribed by my son's father. I did an interview with her and I said I sold the car because that was the only property in my possession. I had a son. I was leaving the marriage. I was not going to leave the marriage empty. Like I said on Instagram, if I saw his soul, I would have sold it. If there was any other property that he had apart from that car, I would have sold it because I was a wife, not a girlfriend. I have a son for you. I have a child for you. So that's it. Um, on the car issue, I was pregnant and I went to give birth. I was in America then. Um, before now, we've had so much hardship. So much hardship. He had not been able to provide for me. I met him broke and I married him broke. So when I was in America, the joy of your husband sending you pictures, oh, I got you this car. I was elated. I was happy. I was overwhelmed that, oh, you know what? Look at how much this guy could not even pay for a wedding to the fact that now he is buying me a car. I was very happy. So I did post it on Instagram. But I never knew that the car was not even in my name. I never knew that the car was not even my own. Because he knows that I'm, 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 I'm a kind of person who wears my heart on my sleeve. If I love you, you would know it. The world would know it. If I don't like you, it's very evident. If I want to love you, it's evident. So there is no in-between. It's either black or white. So he knew that the excitement would make me post those videos. And that's, that's where I would always say that he's a, he's a narcissist. He sits down and he plots everything that he does. He knew I was going to post that, that picture. So when I posted it, and by the time I came back to Nigeria, um, I, I, didn't use, I, I never used to drive when I, after I gave it to my son. I had um, a driver and my friend, I had a very good friend then that used to take me someplace because I didn't even know Abuja. So there was a day she got into trouble with the law and she needed, they needed the owner of the car. So she had to come get me. So I went there to the law office and they said, Madam, I know that you're Tonto, but you need to get the vehicle um, papers. So I had to go, go back home. I opened our safe. That was the first time I ever saw the car papers. I looked at the papers. It wasn't my name. It wasn't even my, son, my, father's, my son's father's name. It was just a neutral name. And the price there was, I think, 16 or 15 million naira. So it, it didn't, it, I wasn't bothered about it, but by the time I asked him, he didn't have any good explanation to give to me. Um, so for me, I was like, you know what? Even if it's not in my name, as far as he said he bought the car for me, what belongs to my husband, it's mine. So that was how I got to post that video, that picture like it was mine. And now I didn't sell the car while I was living in his house. I sold the car the very, the very day I left his house and saying I did not want the marriage again. It was the only property that was available because the house we lived in was rented. I know that he said that it was bought, but it was rented. It was rented and it was furnished. It came with everything, even to the pillows. I think I only bought like two or three pillows from America to add up to the pillows at home and a dining table. That is all we bought and contributed into that home. So there was nothing for me to have sold. So I sold the only possession, which was a car, which I didn't really use, I need. I have, I have cars in Port Harcourt. I have my, my G-Wagon in Port Harcourt. I have my, my Hummer. I had my Hummer. I, had, I still had my um, FJ Cruiser. No, sorry, not my FJ Cruiser, my um, FX Infinity. I still had my, I had one on a small car. One of that two years ago. So I still had all those things I'd already sent to my family. So I didn't really need a car. I needed the money so I could start up a new life. And that's what I did. Um, now, looking back, 
I think it was all the lies. It was all the lies because everything I ever liked about him was a lie. I'm not saying that I went out there to say I want to date or I want to get married to a who who is in, in Nigeria. But I am tonto. You don't expect me to get married to a pauper. So definitely when he said I am Obasanjo's son, when his own mother told me I'm Obasanjo's wife, it was a plus for me. It was a plus. When you tell me that the house that I'm, I'm coming to Ghana to visit is your own property, because it was a large property, he said it was his own property, which he could never even prove ownership. And it would still come up because I have proof of someone embarrassing us on Instagram about the house not being his own and he's owing and he's um, um, destroyed the whole property. So when you get to hear about a life that you can live with a man, that you don't have to extremely worry. When I, when I knew that he was broke and I understood that, okay, this is the situation, I get broke, everybody gets broke. That's life. Every good businessman or good businesswoman should get broke because you put in your money and wait for more to come in. So that was the situation I thought that this man was in. I never knew it was fraud. I never knew it was Yahoo that the money will come this year and in five years you are out of money till maybe another, that's how it is for some of them. So that was not what I thought. I was told that this man is into IT. Until date, there is nothing, there is nothing on the face of the earth that has shown that this man has done any IT job for anybody. I didn't go out getting married to a 419 person. I've been duped in the past. And it's something that I do know that carries a lot of cost spiritually because I know how much I insulted the person who stole even just 100 naira from me. Well, I wouldn't, take, I wouldn't take all of that away. Maybe I felt something, but right now sitting down here, I would not like to call it love because it, it was never based on the truth. It was based on lies, so it was infatuation. He didn't pay for anything at all. You see, um, a lot of people say, oh, you're very stupid. Oh, you paid for your wedding. You're very desperate. No, it didn't happen that way. I lived here in Nigeria and he lived in Ghana. Whenever he came here, he lived with me. Whenever I went to Ghana, I lived with him. So that was how the relationship was. When we were planning our wedding, I was here in Nigeria. He was in Ghana. And all he kept saying was, baby, go ahead and spend. Baby, go ahead and spend. I will repay you back. You see what? The, um, the reason I, I, I actually did this interview is because I have a lot of proof. I have, a, I have a lot of documents to back up everything I said. Um, this is... First of all, I'd like to say there is no kind of proof in this world that stands out than a conversation between two people. Now, I cannot forge a document about somebody else. The network would sue me, the person would sue me. So if this is not his number, I would be sued. Now these are documents of me asking this man to pay me back the money I used in marrying him. In this document also, you would also see his replies. There is also a document stated here when I said that he never gave me any money and he acknowledged it, that he never gave me any money for. I said, Ola, the only money you gave me for the wedding is 1.7 million. Even your family contributed 1 million inside this money. You asked me to keep spending my money, you would pay me back. I don't know why it's an issue now. Is 1.7 million my bride price or is that what bought the drinks, flew you there, paid for hotel and fed you? My friend's boyfriend paid for the hotel that my husband slept with me in, made love to me in on the day of my wedding. It was another man that paid for it. To the drinks of my wedding, I paid for it. I flew my ex-husband down from Ghana to Nigeria, to my village to get married to me. His uncle, God bless him, he's a pastor, gave me one million naira through my son's father. That is the 1.7 million I was talking about. Then my son's father gave me two different money, 300,000 naira once and 400,000 naira once, which is making 400, 700,000, which I never used that money for the wedding because by the time it came in, I'd already spent and I've already dispatched all the money that was out. So yes, these are all the documents that shows that Olakunle Churchill 
was married by a woman's money. It's here. So if you say that this is not your number, Lakule Churchill, I will prove to the world that this is your number. I will go to every network that you use and I'll prove to them that this is your number because this is your number and these are all the proof that you even even in here he negotiated my bill because while I when I asked him for this money was after we got married I knew that I wanted to leave him so I started asking for all of my properties I just wanted to, in disguise to take everything I had and leave so I started to ask him for it and at the end of this at the end of this he paid me 10 million naira that was 2016 December, that was the, the, the month I left him. That's when he gave me 10 million naira as a cover for all everything I did. In here is also, it's also a message that he asked me that I should, that, that how much, he said, baby, how much have you spent so far from the introduction up to this? Give me. That's what he does sometimes. So if I ask him for my money for too much, then he will not say, oh, tell, send me. And in the next one month, he doesn't send my money anymore. So these are all the proof that I paid to marry this man. And this man did not spend a dime, not even for food. Actually, Three days ago, he actually said that in an interview. The interview is on Stella Dimoko. I actually have, I would send it to you so that it can come up on screen. I actually have the, um, um, the short code to it. He said that there was never a wedding. That he, there were only four people and it was a parlor wedding. Which, my, there was no marriage. There was just uh, like knocking. No celebrity came. You didn't even call an artist. You didn't call any of your friends. Just four of us. Me, my mom, and two other people. What we had was a pile of them, but they celebrated. We were to do the... Now, there were 250 people in attendance sitting down in my wedding. Then the whole village, three communities before my village, they all came out because my father is a big deal from where I come from. So they all came out. I had over a thousand people at my wedding, and these are pictures to prove it. These are pictures. You zoom in. These are pictures of different, different people. There is a video. There's a dancing video of the two of us. You see the crowd. You see the mopos. My father had to get almost twelve lorries of of, of mopos because of protection. And this man went to a court and told the court that I paid for my wedding because there were only four people. I know people sit at home and say, you know, this girl is very stupid, you paid for your wedding. Why did you pay for your wedding? You are desperate, why did you pay for your wedding? No, I was pregnant for this man. This man, I was a, I was a working scam for this man. Like I told you, I, he already told me, stay, okay, don't worry, continue spending your money, I will reimburse you when I come back. What was I going to say? What was I going to do? Not spend, not do it, did I even know I was going to get scammed or going to get... Uh, 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 I didn't know all of these things. Because if I knew, I would not be the person... I would not be the person to be in this situation, trust me. So this is the wedding attended by only four people. That is his mother there spraying, that sprayed me 2,000 naira in 200-200 naira notes. That is his mother there, dressed in Ashwebi. On the pictures on the slide, my father was wearing Ashwebi. I was wearing Ashwebi, even to the dress this man wore. He doesn't even know who tailored his dress. I bought materials. I took his, I took his dresses to a tailor. I sold his clothes, bought him a shoe, just to come for a wedding that I paid for. And you tell me that four people are telling only that wedding? Four people? Kule, four people? Well, the truth is, you will say there was no wedding because she never paid for a wedding. I paid for the wedding. So I know there was a wedding. I know there was a wedding. And the world knows that there was a wedding too. Mm. I, I, I seriously don't want to break down because aside from the first time, the first time I did my interview, that was the only point where I was weak. Right now, I'm not weak. I'm a tiger. 
Right now, I'm a tiger out for blood. So there is no weakness here. I feel terrible. I feel bad. I feel used. I am the biggest scam that Churchill or Lakunle or Laduni has ever played in his life. I never wanted to have a child. I've always said it on all my interviews. So I was not using a child to trap a man. There was no reason for me to use a child to trap a man because I had said it in all my interviews. I don't want to have children. And I didn't want to do, I didn't want to have children for my personal reasons. I had mommy issues. My mother died. I was scared of losing myself and losing my... I, ju I just didn't want to go in that, down that road. I met some man who I thought was a human being. Who cajoled me, lied to me, beat me into getting what he wanted. I'm not going to keep quiet anymore. No. Yes. Um, the first interview I did, which was with Azuka, the woman who actually deceived me to take an interview for me and got bribed by King's father. Now, I, asked, I gave them this picture. There's a picture of me here and there's also another picture. This, actually, this one, my son's father actually released him. His media people actually released it to the internet, on the internet. This is a video, this is actually a video of me trying to hit him. And if you look closely on this video, you will know that my face has been battered. My face had potholes. Like you could see, you could see all of that. Now, I'm sure the video will also play. Now, this is also one of my pictures. This is a black eye. I also gave them a picture of one of my ribs. This is a black eye. I gave it to them and they said that I, I, made, I, I made this up like it was a makeup artist. I want to appeal to the whole of Nigeria and all the makeup artists in Africa, Nigeria, everywhere I've ever traveled to, if you did this makeup for me, please, it is not time for you to keep quiet. Come out and speak and call me a liar that I did a makeup for this. I have been told that they were going to take this picture for forensic. I was so happy when they said that. It's been three years now, nobody has brought out a forensic about this picture. I lost a pregnancy. There was a night, one of, the, one of the days I confirmed that this man was truly Yahoo. I, after I came back from giving birth for my son, I had been suspecting that he was Yahoo. Before, 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 before I even came back to Nigeria, I had started to suspect. But the only thing that actually made me confirm was a night. He wasn't supposed to be home that night. And I slept early. Because of my son, I sleep early. And I went and I heard some noise upstairs in his room because I, my room is he's in the penthouse and my room is under so I, I heard the noise upstairs nobody was supposed to be in that room so I was going to go check what was happening in the room I opened up this room I saw a full-grown man wearing a red cloth in his waist with red candles everywhere around him with a laptop in his hand immediately I saw that I just I was I was shocked I was simply shocked and I just said, uh, I, I was shocked, I was not scared but I was shocked but I, I just started laughing like a mad person. I just started laughing. He got me and that was one of the fights we fought after King. He, the, the, when, I lost my mis when I lost my pregnancy, he pushed me down a flight of three stairs. We were fighting. Now, people will say, you know what, Tonto, why did you stay and you fought so long and you are fighting? This man is hitting you and you're fighting and you're not leaving. Domestic violence is not always very easy for you to walk away from. And don't forget the fact that everybody wanted this relationship to fail, even you that's watching it. You told yourself, you told your mother, you told your father, you told your sisters, you told your brothers that Tonto's marriage was not going to last. So how would I have left a marriage that you thought was not going to last? Would I not have worked so, so at least to a little extent to make it work, even if I was dying? A lot of people are going through this. Most of you sitting at home, even criticizing me, you are going through this. They are beating you every day and you are enjoying it because of your children's sake. I was, I was one of the only few people who could not. And I'm speaking out. And I would not be called a liar for speaking out. If you want to take this picture to America, to London, to Europe for forensic, I am in. And secondly, when Azuka was bribed, 
and she said to work for Churchill after my interview. I told Azuka something. I said, Azuka, please, why would this man, the, the house we fought in was his mother's house. His mother just bought a new house for herself. She works for a mental home. So I, so she, she, she's, she's a hard worker and she's, I mean, I don't, I don't know, but I know she works for a mental home. So when she came back home December, she wanted to buy a house. Before December, she wanted to buy a house. So she bought the house for December 2016. And when we went there, that's where the fight happened. And that's where I left from Lagos back to Abuja and I ended the marriage. That was the house I left from. That house had cameras at every angle. Every angle. In fact, there was nothing you could do in that house that didn't have camera. I told Azuka, I said, you know what? Azuka, if I was Churchill, that, that a woman comes out to say, you beat me up. And I have this technology in my home that will vindicate me. Why would I not bring it out? Why would I not release it? Rather, you are releasing a phone recording that you recorded after you finished beating me and my blood was all over the floor. And your mother was behind the scene saying, oh, I'm scared for my son's life. Meanwhile, it was her daughter-in-law's blood that was on the floor. But she was scared for her son's life. That had no injury on him. Why was the CCTV camera not released? That would have been an easy vindication to call me a freaking liar. That would have been an easy vindication to, for the world to say, you know what, Tonto is a writer. Release it. Because he couldn't, he can't release it because that, that, those tapes showed how much he constructively beat me up. His brother came out and said that I beat him. And why his brother said I beat him? If you notice, you have to be holding somebody behind for me to bite you here. Do you understand? You have, to, you have to hold me. If you hold me like this, okay, this is me, right? If you hold me, if you hold me like this, and this is me, th this is you. The only thing that I can do is come back here and bite you. Because my hands are locked. So I beat the brother and I beat his skin real good. I thought I even ate the flesh. I beat it real good. And that's when all of them gathered and they started beating me. And that's when the mother fell down. You can imagine me falling your mother in front of two of his sons. A mother in, in front of two of his sons. Would you think any woman would survive it? Even if you kill that woman, nobody would blame you. Nigerian mentality. Nobody would, nobody would support the woman. Nobody would. He said, I pushed her down the stairs. Directly in front of the stairs is the camera. I need that photography. I need, I need that photograph to come out. Let it, let, release it. Why are we going back and forth? You beat me, you know, beat me. I know how much this man cries every night because of the pregnancy I lost. I know how much you tell me that your children are chasing you in your dreams because of the pregnancy you made me lose by beating me. And now you sit down and say you never touched me. I'm glad that somebody else is beating your mother too because I heard that her, drive, her, her taxi driver boyfriend is beating her too. I'm glad. I never, I never pushed his mother down. But what I know I did that was disrespectful when I know that she was there and she was watching all of these things happen. And she called my mother in the middle of the fight when her son was beating me and said, your daughter is fighting, oh! Your daughter is fighting, oh! That is what this woman called my mother to say while I was being held and being beaten. And when I heard that, I lost it. I know I said some things. But I made it right by going back to her because my father said, go back and apologize. And when I went back to that woman and apologized to her, she knelt down, laid down in front of me, my leg, in front of my other sister and was begging me not to leave her, 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 her son. Begging me and telling me to forget everything. And I told her, and that's when I stood my ground. I said, Mama, Ma Mommy, I am sorry. My father said that she come and apologize to you. I am sorry for ever speaking to you wrongly. Ever speaking to you wrongly, because that's the only thing I did wrong. Ever speaking to you wrongly, and I left, I left her with the fact that I did not want to be part of this family again. And I went back, I'd already moved out of the house anyway. I became a mother. I became a mother. Um, what I did not want became the only thing that mattered. My son is literally the only thing that 
that really matters. And um, that was one reason why I did everything in my power to not go back to the kind of life that I used to live. I mean, I was, not, I was never really a bad person, okay? Smoked one cannabis here and there, you know, had my own share feel of this and that. I was never been an addict of anything, never. But just knowing that I was responsible for something growing inside of me. It, I, I actually quit smoking before I became pregnant. But being pregnant was actually a motivation to live a cleaner life. All I think about is, what if my son needs blood today and I'm rushed to a hospital? and because of I smoked one split, or because I have I drank too much alcohol, I cannot give him blood. And that's the reason why, God forbid, he might not make it. You know, I worry a lot about my son because I love him so much. Yes, he might have not been in my plan, but he was in God's plan, and God put him where he was supposed to be. So I have no regrets for my son. And um, about the drug allegation, these are, all of my documents. You see, this is from George Memorial Medical Center. This is one of the biggest maternity hospitals in Lagos here. It's actually in Lekki Phase 1. It's highly recommended by the Indians, the Americans, and the European doctors. This is a clearance for me to travel out of the country. Before you get this clearance as a pregnant woman traveling, you would have to have a toxicology um, um, test and every other test so you don't put the hospital here in trouble because if you leave Nigeria and go outside the country and they know that there's a substance in your body it's not necessarily you they will find they will find your hospital here and seize their license so this is a clearance that I was okay to travel and give birth this is a toxicology report from the biggest hospital in Abuja. This was actually done 2016, just after I gave birth. This, this is actually the hospital that uh, Mohamed Buhari's first um, son, when he had a bike accident, this is the hospital that he stayed in, and this is the hospital that I, I did my test in. If you look closely, it's a toxicology report. All the reports there say is negative. No doctor is gonna cover up for me this much. This is an authentic, authentic document that can be traced back to the hospital. This is the second toxicology report when I was accused. December 2016, when I was accused by my son's father that I was on drugs and that's why my marriage was ending. He said that because he wanted to divert the whole attention of what he is and what he did. This is the toxicology report. On there, I don't know if you can see it, it says all negative. I'm sure it will come up on the screen. Now, this is the hospital I gave birth to in Houston, Texas. It's called West Houston. And this is all their report. This report, this test, they run all of this test on you once you come in as a patient till you give birth, until after you give birth. It contains toxicology reports, it contains any other sickness you've had, it contains anything that you hide in your body, it just contains everything. Now, America is not Nigeria, right? If you give birth and you are on drugs, they will take your baby because that baby, my child is not Nigerian. I mean, he has a Nigerian passport, but he's American. They will take him away from me. I am not, I, I would not be allowed to come near that boy until I rehabilitate myself. There was no issue like that. This is a toxicology report from one of the biggest and the best maternity hospital in Houston, in America actually, West, um, West Houston Medical Center. So yes, all of the reports about drugs, was all a lie. Um, my son's father wanted to use a drug allegation to mess or to hide all of the things, all of the domestic violence. Because when the story of, of us breaking up came out, it didn't come out as domestic violence first. I'd never told anybody about that. It came out as somehow the bloggers got to know about him cheating 
with his staff in the in the in the in, um, his staff in his office and also to the actress. So that was how everything blew up. So because of they wanted to hide that shame, they said, you know what? Let's go for something that the world will believe that Tonto does. Let's go for something that the world will believe that oh she can do or is believable. Because even in court, I can have my court papers here. I am granted sole cost not okay custody of my son. And there was no debate whatsoever from his lawyers or himself. Now I'm thinking, right, if I have a wife that is a drug addict, I would fight her in court just to take my son away from her. I would fight her so that she would not be around my son. Just like I think that he is a, a spirit, as, as in he's diabolic. And that's why I presented my case to the court. And that's why they said, you are not allowed to come near your son if your wife does not put someone close to you that she alone can trust. So he has very strict supervised visitation on my son. That's because I was able to prove how diabolic he is in court. And he never mentioned anything about, oh, she's on drugs, let's take the child. In fact, he even told the court, give her custody of the boy. So, no drugs. No, no drugs hides in your body. Every drug, even, even cannabis, when you smoke cannabis, it stays in your body for three whole months. No doctor can take it off away. No medication, no detox can take it away from your system. They will catch you. It is real. None here. Never on drugs, darling. Yes, um, I gave the court substantial amount of proof. I'm just going to show you just a little bit of one of some things I would wake up and find under my pillow, under my son's bed, on top of my son's novel. This is a conversation between myself and the, my son's father's younger brother when I was saying that they need to come and take this shit out of my home because I'd left, I'd left, yeah, I've left him, now. I've, I've divorced him already, so I, I said they need to come and break whatever cost is on this shit. And um, I gave the court, uh, yes, the court actually does not admit that ball is in, but the strength of my accusation make them worry for concern about my child because it's a, it's a boy's life. I can, if I can speak and I can talk and this is all they did to me, I would wake up. His, I mean, his mother was, every, we were married for, we were, he said we were married for, that we lived together for, for six months, but we lived together for 10 months after marriage because I came back from um, America two months after I gave birth, February. Two months was February, March, April, April, and I divorced him and I left his house by December. So that's nine, 10 months, right? So he said it was six months. I don't know where his head was though, but he said it was six months. And I'm saying it was nine stroke, 10 months that we lived together. And in that 10, nine to 10 months, his mother was there maybe like five times and she would stay for like maybe two weeks. One. I mean, it's okay, family is okay. I, I did not worry about that. My, my concern was the spiritual artifact that this woman would bring into the house all the time. That was only the time when I became defensive or I became disrespectful to any member of his family when it came to that because I always, always spoke up. I never kept quiet about it. I always spoke up. So we always had fights about it. I also have documents of him telling me how he wants to go back. I'm sure all of those things will come up on, on this thing. How he wants to, um, how he was going to borrow money from me so he can go and do some jazz. I have all the documents here. Because he has a daughter already who he says that he doesn't have. I mean, he came, to, he came out and said that he has no child apart from skin. This man has a child. And the mother of this child is jealously protecting the girl not to even be close to them because we all know i for one i got married to him so i know who he is churchill is a very selfish manipulative person this is a man that would insult his own mother call her all sorts of names treat her as though she was a scum or reply her with 
he was he 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 was he was he's a terrible person, so to speak. He's a very terrible person, and the only thing he cares about, and that's why anytime we fought, anytime he hit me and he beat me, I would always go to his jazz drawer, I would break his jazz, or I would go to his clothes where he has his designers, I would break them, or I would break his laptop because I know that was the only thing that affected him. And I can remember clearly, he said it in his interview the first time, we're still with the same Azuka. And I also have documents of me telling Azuka. There's a document here. I said Azuka, I said I would, I'm, I'm born again and I would not lie that I never broke properties. Anytime I was beaten, my revenge was to go back and break everything. So yes, I broke properties, I destroyed properties. He can do anything to anybody because he wants to be rich. There's actually something I'm not going to say. I'm just, I will wait to be pushed. I will wait, I will wait, I will wait to be pushed. But there's something I saw between him and his mother. But I will wait, Churchill, to be pushed. I have said it once in a message. It was there. Maybe people will forget about it. But I will wait to be pushed. Now, for 419, Yahoo, you know, you go online, you dupe white women, you go online, you dupe people. That's what my son's father does. I'm not proud of it. I'm saying, I told you, I said, this interview is mainly not for Nigerians. It, I want my son to grow. I'm not, I'm not the kind of mother that's going to hide things from her son. No, my son will know everything and the whole truth. I'm not going to lie to him, but then I'm not going to hide things from him. So, yes, my son's father is a fraud. He does Yahoo. How I know? Because I caught him in the middle of a red candle with, with laptop in his lap and a red pant on, and a red cloth tied around his waist. Not just that. I mean, coming from the house we stayed in when I was married to him, this man told everybody that he bought the house. He didn't buy this house. This house was rented. This approved that he, it was rented. This approved of conversation between me and the agent when the agent did not do something right in the house. I told him how much we paid for rent. Everything is there. I, t I told him how much he paid for rent and this is the conversation of, of the landlord himself. This is a conversation from the landlord himself. He said, look at it. This is this here is from the landlord. So different things, different things. I know he's 419 because I know he's 419. It's on the streets. Go to Ghana and ask about him. He says he's into IT. Please, what, what has he done? What is the IT? Let me know. What IT work has this man done? Why would you buy a car and your name is not on the car? You see how this thing about the fraud money? You see, I've led him to know a, 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 little, some, a few things. When they cannot bring in money into Nigeria from fraud, they buy cars. So it is very easy for you to say a Yahoo boy has cars. But it is very hard for you to say a Yahoo boy has properties and that's one thing that he was his problem. When he, he, he's out of money for so long, Yahoo does not pay for so long, a mate the Yahoo pays, he wants to buy clothes, he wants to buy this, he forgets to invest. Even the house in Ghana that this man told me, lied to me, that he owns the house in Ghana. Now this is a message. This is a message between I and the, the agent. The agent came to my page on Instagram to embarrass the life out of me. Called me a very dirty woman. Called me how useless and how stupid and how disgusting I and my ex-husband was. I only got to read it and read it and read it. This is the agent who rented the house this man lied that he bought in Ghana. The man even told me in this message, he said, your son's clothes are lying down everywhere. I didn't know that the, that my son's father had taken his property and ran away from the home. I didn't know that. So they were asking him for the, they were actually asking me that we should come and pay for the balance of whatever rent and also we should come and clean up and arrange and, and um, put together their home back how they gave it to us. I also, and on this, I, I gave the man, I gave the man his mother's phone number. I said, call this phone number. But I bet you, the woman will tell you she does not know the boy, but that is his mo mother. That's the message. He came back and said, I called the number. It was, it was a London number because the mother stays in London. It was a number, London number. I gave him the correct number for his mother. 
His mother said he, she does not know a church hill and off the phone. Two days later, that phone went off because I had already casted the number online. So people were already calling the number. Two days later, they changed the phone. This is his mother in on the same scam. The first time I met them, the mother told me she's a messenger's wife. He's a scam. He told me he's a messenger's son. He's a scam. He was a Liberian for Obasanjo. His father, God bless his soul, even if I did not know him, I'm not sure I would have hated him totally. This is his father. This is who his father is. His father was Obasanjo's gardener that graduated into being a spiritual leader. This is his father. This man has never for one day, he always puts Obasanjo on Obasanjo's baby, uh, a happy birthday daddy, even the, even the brother. If you go to his page, you will see him and Ambassador Daddy, I came to see Daddy. Not for one day have they ever posted this man's picture because they want to keep scamming people that they are Ambassador's son. This is his father. No relationship with Ambassador. If this man had a relationship with Ambassador, I would be the happiest girl on earth because it's a name that my son will inherit and walk on to be a better person in life. This is his father. When I went for the first time I knew that he was not, I had always suspected because I was the one spending, I told you, I said, why, why we met, he was broke. He started having money after I left to go and give birth. That's when his first Yahoo ever money came, when I knew him. That's the first time I ever knew him with money because that was when he paid for the, um, I think it was eight, eight million, the 60 million naira apartment we stayed in for two years rent. That was, that was the first time his money came in. That was the first time the, uh, the car was the first time. The car was the first time money came and everything started to happen for him to do. So every other thing, I was the one trying to do it for him. So yes, this is his father. You see the same resemblance. Even my son looks like him somehow. Yes, I did. The first day I was going to be introduced to Obasanjo was my... I had two introductions and one traditional wedding. The first introduction was for Obasanjo, the second was for my parents. So the first introduction, I was already pregnant, I was three months pregnant when I met Obasanjo. The first thing I met him, he told me, he is not my son. Pump and plain, the man does not hide his mouth, but he is like my son. I remember when I went back home, I looked at the mother, I looked at the son. Why did you lie? What was the lie? You see, they, they hate me so much for my boldness, that family. Because I called the both of them. I said, why did you lie? As long as there was a relationship, as long as this man can stand in and say he is like a son, why would you ever lie? That was where I, I stood in to now, when I say, oh, you know what, okay, I would not be the one to break it out. That's why when I went, when, there was an interview online that when it said, I showed them, they said, is he your passenger son? I said, yes. If you see my body language, I was very uncomfortable. And that was a week after I just gave birth to my son. In fact, my mother-in-law was upstairs right there, holding my son, looking down at me when I was doing that interview. God bless this boy. His name is Bode. Bode is Golden Icons. He, he's the owner of Golden Icons. Golden Icons is an award. And it's a TV too, and that's the TV that recorded me. I said a lot of things in that video. And because Bode wanted to... You know, Bode knows I've had, a, I've had a hard time with the press, with the media. And I just gave birth. He wanted things to be easy for me. So he sent me before he posted it. And I sent it back to the man I was married to that time. And he said, you know what, no, they will catch us here, move here, we'll move here. You can confirm this from Bode, he is a media person now. Bode is a blogger, because he, oh, he, he does all this interview, so there's, he, he will not cover up for me. There are so many other things I said that would have implicated me, and people that say, oh, ooh, that when I gave it back to my son's father, he said, you know what, let's take it away, let's take this away, let's take it away. And that's how you saw that short video. I was not going to be the one who was going to leak a family secret that they have been using to eat food. Because that's, that's the means they're using eating in Lagos. I am a passenger's son. See, 
One thing I would say I admire about my son's father is how bold he lies. How bold he lies. For the past five years, I have never been to London. Never been to London. When I was traveling out of the country, I traveled to BA, going to America. So there's always a stopover. And you don't enter into London. It's a stopover one hour, two hours, and you go again. You don't enter. So I never entered London. Here again, it's coming back. We sit for coming back. We never entered London. Our plane spoiled, and the airline, BA, had to keep us in a hotel inside the airport. I didn't have a visa. For five years, I have not had an, a UK visa. And I met this man only how many years ago? I have never been to London to see his mother. I have never stayed in his house in London. I know that his mother lives in a community house, but I do not know where it is. The woman has never come to stay with me to take care of me. She came to America when I, in fact, she came that day when I, when I gave birth to my son. And I did not allow her to stay in the hospital because I knew what she was going to do. They have this thread that they always want to tie on the, on the, on the thumb of the newborn baby. And they told me they were going to do it. And that's why I told the doctors, I said, I don't want my son sleeping with me the first two nights. My son did not sleep with me the first two nights. He didn't come to my room the first two nights. Because I didn't want the mother close to my son for that. I made sure that she never involved in helping me for my son. I made sure I did everything because I wanted to be closely watching her. Because I knew who she was. So for her son to say that I went to London for the mother to take care of me. Olakunle Churchill, what visa did I use to London? The last time I was in London was the last time I fell on stage, which was back in the days when I, when I started having my drug rage back in the days, seven years ago or so. So how and when did I go to London for your mother to take care of me and buy me all the lovely things that she bought for me? The other way around it is, I fed your mother, I gave her my money, had any money. I move my clothes off my back where she says she loves it and I give it to her, she wear it. And you come and you lie like this. God will vindicate me and I know it. And I'm not looking for vindication from you or the world. God will put vindication on all of these things I'm saying and my son will believe it if nobody believes it. You guys are liars. You're pathetic liars. Um, this is very shameful, but I'm going to do it because I'm all about blood. And when I mean blood, I mean telling the truth. Um, yes, Olakunle, you said that you had an account, a Zenith account, actually. You said it on Azuka. That you ha and you said it in other, other, other interviews too. You said that you have an account, Zenith Bank account, which I am the signatory to. And being the signature to the account means that I'm the only one who can withdraw money from it, right? And you also said that in that account, you pay in millions. Now, you also accused me of not taking the account, which, yes, I did not take the account. I didn't, I didn't, there was no handover. But when I was handed over the account, this is it. The money that was inside the account was 319,000 Naira. Look at it. It shows you that this is the first day that the account was handed over to me. It also shows you that this is the first time that I ever got an, an alert. So look at it. This also I'm sure will be posted online. Um, this is the first time he paid after the court. We went to courts in I think um, Jan uh, January, February. I think between February and March. So this was the first time he ever paid anything child support. I wrote it, I said he paid 200,000, 10th of March. March, April, he paid again. He did not pay for uh, April, May, no May. He didn't pay for June, no payment for July. That's 2018. No payment for September, no payment for October, no payment for November. 
no payment for December 2018. Look at it, no payment from him. No payment from January 2019. No payment February 2019. Then he pays March 2019, a year later. Now, let me tell you why he paid that. There is this blogger online, her name is Cutie Juice. She knows him and have a few of her friends who have been defrauded by him. So she, she's on his case. So she started to write about his other child and also King, that he doesn't pay child support. So she was on his case for over two days. Two days, which this was March. This is the third, 8th of March, 2019. Look at it. After the blogger called him out severely, embarrassed him, then two days later, he paid. And this is where she was rejoicing. This is her page. This is her page where she was rejoicing. Cutie juice. This is where she was rejoicing. Say, Churchy pays child support amount of 200,000 on this day, 8th of March, 2019. After blogger Cutie juice called him out to show evidence. Because she was calling him out and saying, if you are paying for school fees like you claim you're paying and you're paying child support we need proof she was the only blogger who investigated and who does her investigation right she called him out and he shamelessly paid him and that was the only money my son got from his father this year after one year of child support payment now he also claims that he pays my child's school fees well for the school fees this is it. My son goes to the best, one of the best schools in Abuja. I would also like you to please not show my son's school where you're showing this. My son goes to the best school in Abuja. And in the school, once you pay, once you make a payment, you get a receipt. If you are not the parent that paid, you're not the parent that will get the receipt. Now my son is only three years old and this is one, two, Three, four, five. For a three-year-old, there should be only there should be six receipts. If your child starts school the way my child started school, there should be six receipts. I have five receipts. I don't have the sixth one because that is the only receipt. That's the only payment I did not make, and it was a payment for three hundred and fifty thousand naira for a particular term. That's the only receipt I don't have. Now, after the court, that's to say that all of these receipts here, I paid it myself. If not, I would never have gotten these receipts. And they are original. This is not even photocopy, they are originals. Okay, so um, after the court, after we went to court, I sued him to court for, um, to court for child support and documents of my son and also paying of school fees. The, the, the school, the, the court asked Kunle to start paying child support. And two the first month he paid child the first term he paid child support, the second term I was out of the country. The school had already sent, because the from, from how we do it is, since the court says the father should pay the school fees, the, the school sends the receipt to the father's email and the father has to reply. Now, this was the second time, after the first time he paid, this was the second time they were sending a, an email to his page. He did not reply. So they waited until 30 days later. I was outside this country in South Africa and I got this message. It says, good morning, ma. I hope you had an awesome night. Please, ma, this is to inform you that your son is the only child, the only child in school that is yet to pay his school fees. We strongly advise that you should pay. You should you should, we strongly advise that you should pay. And that's it. This is how my son's father embarrassed my son. This is how he reduced my son for them to call him out. Me, don't do DK. I pay school fees for people I don't know. I pay school fees for over 4,000 people for my foundation. I pay child support for over 10 women I don't know single mothers on Instagram. I pay debts for people.
I buy gifts from people. Even one iPhone, one of the iPhones that I give out, is not even compared to the amount for this school fees, and this man could not pay it. I had to leave South Africa, and I ran to Nigeria, and I paid this bill. That was when I took this to my lawyer, and um, Festus Kiyamo is my lawyer. <coughs> I took it to my lawyer, and my lawyer says, you know what, Tonto, you have to keep embarrassing your son because we need all of this proof for court. So now, every time, I have to wait to get this notification. So that I would tell the court that I got this notification, it was embarrassing and I had to pay the school fees. If they say, why did you pay the school fees yourself? Because it was not. So this is how my son lives and operates. The school is there. I would leave phone numbers and it can be traced. This is also a DM. My son's school is on DM. When the day that um, my son, the day that he was saying that he pays school fees, when um, there was this blogger who came online, he sponsored the, the, the blog and came online and said he was paying school fees. When he said that, my son's school sent me this. This is, an, this is a DM. They said, it is well, we know the truth. This is what my son's school sent to me. If I was not the one paying the school fees, if I was lying, why would my son's school support me? Why would I have all of these documents? Kunle, I know you don't have, you have just one. So my son is three years old and he didn't go to school just once. Look at all the times when I had to pay for school fees. And you tell the world that you are paying for the school fees. How are you paying for the school fees? How?